Welcome to the weak knees video showing how to add an external hard drive in place of your internal hard drive on a TiVo Edge. This video applies to a TiVo Edge for cable or for antenna and is specifically meant for use with weak knees parts. Okay, first of all, let's go over what comes in the kit. We've got a spudger, which is a tool to help open the unit, some cable ties, uh, this is a special tool that opens screws on the edge. This is our weak knees cable that helps route to the outside hard drive. There's a replacement door to allow that cable to exit properly. This is an ESATA extender cable. We'll show you where that goes later on. Then you've got your weak knees external hard drive. It's got a stand and of course it has a power supply. You'll also need your TiVo edge and the power supply and then you'll need some tools that you should have around your house, a regular Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of scissors, or some kind of clippers like scissors, and then some needle nose pliers. These needle nose can clip right in the tip there. You shouldn't have a problem finding the right tool for that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take the um, spudger tool, and we're going to cut two slits in the label uh, where the screws are located. So as you can see, one screw head is roughly where the date is. And if you just wipe your finger over it, you'll feel the indentation for the hole there. So you can figure that out, punch it with the spudger tool just to get through the label. We punch it in an X just so it works nicely. The other screw hole is further to the left, just to the right of the UPCs or the barcodes, I should say. Go ahead and slice an X in there. Then you're gonna take your weak knees uh, edge screw removal tool and basically stick that in those holes and you'll find it'll seat on the top of the screw. You're gonna take both screws out and the screws actually need to release completely from the case, but if you can't pull it out past the label, that's fine. They can come out or they can stay just under the label. Here's the screw. And here we're getting the second screw out. That's the only time you'll need this screwdriver, except of course, when you're putting the same screws back in. Okay, that screw is staying under the label. That's fine. It's really no big deal either way. Next, you're going to take the spudger, which is that flat metal tool, and you're going to basically release six different tabs uh, on, on the unit. So here's one of the tabs. Here's another tab. There are two on the left side and then two on the right. And these are pretty straightforward. Put the spudger in there, kind of twist it to get a little leverage, and it'll just release each of the each of the clips. Um, we like to start at the front and then we can go to either side next. And then, yeah, so then we're going to pull up the front and that'll basically release the two additional tabs in the back. Okay. In our case, the door popped off, which is fine. The door has to come off anyway. You can take the door off now if you want. Put it back on for later. Okay. So next, once the lid is off, we are gonna use the needle nose pliers to straighten these six little tabs on top of the hard drive cage. You can tell what's gonna happen here. Those need to be pretty straight so that the cage can lift off of the bottom part of the cage. So once those tabs are straightened like that, we're just gonna lift it right off. It's pretty soft metal, so it doesn't matter if it bends slightly getting it off, not a big deal. We're actually not going to reuse this part uh, with the replacement hard drive. Okay. Now, the next step here is to remove the four Phillips head screws that are going straight down into the unit. So do not try to remove the side Phillips head screws yet. We're first getting these four out. The front one's in a little bit of a strange place there. Make sure you don't get that fan screw, it's just the four that are holding this next part of the bracket down to the motherboard. Obviously a, a magnetic screwdriver is very useful for getting these screws out of these little nooks and crannies. All right, once you have these four screws out, you're basically going to slide the drive in the case forward towards the front of the TiVo, which is towards us in this situation, 
to, to basically release that connector in the back. And then it kind of comes up and out. You might have to lift the front edge slightly to get it over the fan as part of this process. Okay, now that we have this drive uh, case out of the unit, we're gonna remove the four Phillips head screwdrivers. There are two on each side holding the drive into this metal cage. And I should note, these are different screws than the screws that held the rest of the cage in place. These screws have a little bit of a collar to them, just in order to keep them separate from the other screws. The screws with the collar we will not be reusing in this situation. Okay, at this point, once we get the screws out, the drive just lifts right out of this cage and the drive you can set aside for use in the future. So you can go with those same screws and along with your uh, top cage, which also doesn't get reused. So now this is where we will install the cable ties uh, into this bracket. So let's get the bracket aligned again with the way it's gonna go back into the unit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to wanna to figure out which holes to install the cable tie in. So looking at the bracket this way, we're gonna put the cable tie down in the fourth hole from the left side on the second row back from the top. And when you put the cable tie in there, which you'll have to take the bracket out to do it, make sure that the, the uh, receptacle end of the cable tie is facing this way in case that's clear because of the way the cable tie works, you need to have it that way. You'll want to shorten it up, and then you want to come back through the seventh hole in that fourth row. So there, again, we have the tip the right way, or I should say the receptacle the right way. The tip comes through the seventh hole, and we're setting it up just like this to receive the cable later. Okay, the second cable tie works the same way. It goes through the fourth hole just past that solid break. So we're finding the fourth hole there. Again, be conscious of which way that uh, receptacle sits. Back up through the seventh hole. And we're just gonna set those there like that, okay. Here are some pictures to make it clear which holes to use. At this point, we are going to uh, replace the bracket in place and put the four bracket screws back in. So when you put it back in, make sure to line up these four holes, one, two, three, and four. Can you move your hand there for a sec so I can show that fourth hole right there, perfect. So once those four holes are lined up and the cable ties are sitting there nicely, you are going to take the uh, four, these four screws that you removed, again, the, not the screws with these collars on them over here. So these are the wrong screws, and these are the right screws. And you're gonna basically screw those four points back down. Okay, now we're gonna take the this Sweetney's eSATA to internal SATA cable. This is this custom cable. You're gonna take it and you're gonna put it so that the pins are down. So there are these gold pins on there, which you don't wanna be able to see. It'll slide nicely into that connector. Obviously the cable ties, seems like it's in the way. It's actually in the right spot there. And it'll sit just past the cable tie. Then the cable tie is gonna wrap right around the collar of that cable into its receptacle there. Lock it up nice and tight. And uh, yeah, really cinch down on that thing to really hold that in place. And you'll see it's sitting right up against the collar there. It's, that's perfect. Okay, so then we'll, we'll put the second one in place. Just holds it later on in there. Again, cinch down nice and tight. And then we'll take, in our case, we've got uh, some 
snippers or scissors to just trim off those extra pieces of those cable tie, the cable wraps we've got there. Okay, and making sure that that's fully connected perfectly, great, shouldn't move at all. Okay, at this point, why don't we turn the unit back straight so it's straight on the table. And at this point we have two different options. So the cable that comes with your kit is long enough that if your drive is very close to the TiVo, you'll be able to just use the cable that we've provided. If you want to have your external drive a little bit further than the TiVo, you'll want to use the external um, SATA uh, extension cable, which is basically what we recommend in this situation. So the next thing you want to do is pop your door off. You have this cable card door, even if your unit doesn't have a cable card in it. All right. And then you're going to take your connector and you're basically going to try to wrap it about three times. And then once you have it so that the tip is coming out the back there, you can see this length looks about right. The tip is just poking out the back. Use that last cable tie and wrap that cable up. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's trim off the edge there just to be a little bit neat about it. Now, you can go ahead and install the door in the back. And again, if you didn't want to wrap that cable up, you'd have it just more cable coming out. The door that we include in the kit has a little cutout, and you'll see how that fits right in there. Obviously, if your cable card is in there, no problem. That's below all this apparatus. Shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. Okay, make sure the cable is nice and flat there. And then we are ready to uh, reinstall the lid. So here's the lid coming back. And the lid goes basically straight down on the unit. Pretty straightforward. Go ahead and snap each of the corners. It really should snap flush back the way it came. And it should look pretty flush. Now the back there, yeah, the back should snap into this also. And well, that should snap down too. There we go. So there, are, don't forget, there are two tabs on every side of the unit. So if any side doesn't look like it's perfectly aligned, it really should go right back in place. Okay, now we'll flip the unit over and we'll replace the two screws. I think in our case, we had one screw stuck in there with the label and the other screw was out. Again, use that weakness tool to get those screws back in place. And that completes the installation of the internal part. Now we're gonna show you how to hook it up. Just to be clear on the steps, although this is pretty straightforward. Why don't we move that forward a little bit more so everyone can see the back. And here's your Wheatney's drive next to it. So at this point, you're gonna use your, um, your eSATA extension cable. Again, if you had more cable coming out of the unit, you wouldn't need this cable. But in our case, we prefer to do it this way. So we're gonna connect that up to the cable that we mounted out of the new door. The other end of the cable goes into the um, ESATA port on the back of the Wheatney's hard drive. And then you'll use your power adapter to power up your Wheatney's hard drive. And we always recommend powering up the external hard drive first. So you'll plug it in, you'll attach it to power. You'll flip on the switch there. Make sure you see lights on the front of the unit. We, we don't have this attached to live power, so no lights today. And then the final step would be to power up the TiVo Edge. Obviously, you'll need to have connected your HDMI cable and your cable or antenna cable and potentially, um, or potentially an Ethernet cable into the back there. Uh, so then that's it. You should power up and be ready to go. The final item that we didn't use is the stand for the external hard drive. If you prefer to have your external hard drive sitting vertically, that's no problem. We can just flip it up with it Make sure it's powered off, of course, whenever you move it. Flip it up, and it sits in the stand there. If you'd rather have it sitting that way, that's fine also. All right, at that point, your TiVo should be booting, and you should be all set.